How's it going everyone? So in this video, I wanna show you how to build out a real-time chat application using React and also communicating with an Agora SDK to kind of send messages from one tab to another. So notice here we have two tabs right here. I'm gonna go ahead and type in hello world in the first one. And if I go over to the second tab, you'll see that hello world popped up. And this tab can also send messages back to the other one. And this is all in real time. So I'm gonna show you how to build this. It should, shouldn't take too much time to do with React. And it's actually really easy to do this using the Agora SDK, which I'll kind of talk about in a second. But let's just go ahead and get started if you're interested in learning more about this. All right, so we have a blank project structure set up here, and I'm gonna go ahead and use Vite to create a bare bones React single page application. So I can type npm create Vite, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a period here since I am already in this working directory. And that's gonna give me a prompt where I can basically type in the package name that I wanna do and type that in. I'm going to do React and I'll keep it with vanilla JavaScript. So when that is done setting up, you'll have kind of a React project scaffold out here. I'm going to do npm install. And that's going to install the, like the initial dependencies that we'll need for our React application. Now for this tutorial, there are two other dependencies I want to set up. So I'm going to say npm install and then I'm going to do Agora RTM SDK and then I'm going to say UUID. And I'll kind of explain what both of these do in just a second. So now when those are done installing, you can do npm run dev, or if you're using yarn or something else, you can just do like yarn dev, I believe. But when you run that command, you should see that on localhost 3000, you'll have a basic React app running and verify that the counter works and everything like that. So in order to kind of follow through with this tutorial, I am using something called Agora. There is an SDK you can use for JavaScript and it connects to a bunch of services on their back end to basically do this real-time chat application. So I already made an account. I'm gonna go ahead and click the login button and go to my applications. So you'll see here, I have a project already set up called WDJ Chat and I have that set with testing mode. And once you've created a project, you are gonna be needing to copy something called an app ID. So let's just go ahead and copy this. And that's really all you need from this Agora dashboard is that app ID and you can kind of create new chat rooms and talk to each other using that. All right, so going back to our React application, let's go ahead and look at the app.jsx. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete a lot of the boilerplate code that was included with that Vite setup. And we don't really need to counter either. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a constant called const app ID and I'm gonna paste in that string that we got from the website just so we can use it in the future. All right, so step one is I wanna kind of load up the Agora SDK and be able to connect to a, a channel. All right, so let's try to figure out how to do that. I have the app ID already set up, but we do also wanna import a couple of things. So we're gonna import the Agora RTM from Agora RTM SDK. And that gives us a couple of methods from their library that we can use to kind of connect to that Agora dashboard application that I kind of showed you earlier that points to this app ID. So outside of my React component, I'm gonna go ahead and make, an, make a client and I'm gonna say agora rtm.create instance and I'm gonna go ahead and pass it that app ID. And this client is what we're gonna to use to basically create a chat room where our users can kind of connect and send messages. So when the component mounts, we need to kind of set up a channel it, so we can actually allow this uh, React application to send some messages. So let's go ahead and add the use effect hook here. Use effect is how you can kind of create some mounting logic when the app actual mounts on the page. So I'm gonna give it a empty dependency array here. So this is the this is only gonna run one time. And inside the use effect, um, you can't really use async await if you're familiar with React. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new method called connect, which is an asynchronous method. And we're just gonna go ahead and call it like this. So we can start using some await functionality inside here. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna join, tell this application to basically join this so the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of log in to the Agora uh, API. So I'm going to say await client dot login. And this takes two arguments. You can pass it a UID and then you can pass it a token, which we're going to pass null in this example because we have a, a testing um, project set up instead of a natural production one. But for the UID, this has to be something unique for your user. So that's why I kind of installed that UID UUID package. So I'm going to go ahead and import that here. I'm going to say import UUID from UUID. And actually there's an actual method. And actually there is an actual like 
a method from this package called v4. So we're going to grab the v4 package and we're going to rename it as UUID here. So whenever this React application tries to log in, we want to basically create a new UUID for this user. So I'm going to go ahead and make a, um, a UID up here and just call it like that. So when our app first loads, we're going to get a unique identification for our React application. And let's just go ahead and pass that here instead of doing the one. And then after you set that up, what you can also do is create a channel off of the clients. So I'm going to go ahead and say const channel is equal to await client dot create channel. And you can pass this a unique string of what your channel name is going to be. In our case, let's just make it called uh, a constant up here called like channel name is WDJ. For some reason I cannot type today. And let's just go ahead and pass that there. So this is going to create a channel object that we have a bunch of methods on that we can kind of use to invoke and do different things on. And then finally, we can tell this application to join the channel. So I'm going to say await channel dot join like this. And if everything works as expected, we should see this try to print out some console logs and connect to the actual channel. Now, before we dive too deep into this tutorial, I would do want to say that this is using React 18 and React 18 usually comes with strict mode set up with Vite. I'm going to go ahead and delete strict mode because there's a lot of things you get to do in addition to getting this to work in strict mode, which I think takes away from the tutorial that I'm trying to show you, which is just how to create a chat application. And I don't want to dive into the weeds of like, what does React 18 strict mode do? And how do you write code that actually works with strict mode? Right, so let's just go ahead and refresh the page and you'll see that it does start connecting to the Agora endpoint. And it's, you can see that it has a UID and it says that we have joined. All right, so the next steps is we want to be able to allow this React application to send messages to this real-time chat room, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add a form, add some inputs, and maybe a submit button so we can actually send some messages across the wire. So over here in the React application, let's just go ahead and add a form. And inside of this form, I'm going to go ahead and add an input here. And I'm going to also add a button with a plus in it. Now for the input, when the user types into this input, we want to keep track of what they typed in. So we're going to need some state here. So I'm going to say const text and set text is equal to use state hook. I'm going to go ahead and initialize that to an empty string. And when someone types into this input, I'm going to go ahead and say on change. And I'll have that call a anonymous callback function like this. We're going to get an E, right? So E has the actual like value of the form input. So I can say E dot current target dot value. And now whenever someone types into this input, it's going to change based on the event that we got back. All right. So a second thing we need to do is we need to bind this inputs value to the text that the user has typed in. All right. So just to verify this works, you should be able to type into this and you should see text also pop up here. That's a good sign. Uh, second thing we need to do is when you click on this plus button, we're going to have to try to send the messages across to the Agora servers, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add an on submit listener here. And I'm going to have this call a function called send message. And we haven't created this function yet. So let's just go ahead above. This is a const send message is equal to a function. And this function is going to basically take in a E. So whenever you in React have an on submit, you basically get an E. And we need to make sure, remember, to prevent default on that event object so that the form doesn't refresh the page. The one thing I'm going to check is I want to make sure that we don't send blank messages across the wire. So I'm going to say if text is equal to the empty string, then I'm just going to go ahead and return. I don't want to be able to send blank messages to the server. The one thing that I, I kind of noticed is I did spell channel wrong here. Let's just go ahead and fix that real quick. But another thing is we need access to this channel variable inside of this function, right? So in React, you're going to have to basically pull this channel out and put it in state. Let's just go ahead and copy this. I'm going to put channel here. I'm going to put set channel. And instead of an empty string here, I'm just going to put null or leave it blank. And we're just going to go ahead and make sure we call set channel after this use effect is done mounting our component. And now we should have access to this channel variable down here. So I can go ahead and say channel at send message. And we're going to send it some text. And we can say, um, just send it the text that was in the form input, right? Remember, we have a, a state variable called text. So send it that. And then also, I think we can send it a type of text, right? So 
I think there's different things you can send with the Agora API. You can send maybe images and stuff like that, but I'm gonna go ahead and say, just keep it text and send that over. And when we're done sending the message, we're gonna go ahead and clear out an input box. I'm gonna say set text is equal to the empty string. Okay, so now we should be able to send some messages when we submit this form. Unfortunately, there's really no way to kind of visualize that the messages are being sent. So we kind of need to add in the next step, which is maybe adding a panel where we can display the messages as they come in from the other page. Well, let's just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add a yet another state variable called messages. And I'm gonna say set messages here. And that is gonna be equal to an empty array. And we need to basically keep on appending messages to this array when new messages come in. We haven't actually set that up yet, but when we created that channel here, what we can basically do is add an event listener, say channel.on, and I can say channel message, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the message here. And also we get the member ID, okay? So we can go ahead and do this, and whenever we get a message, I'm just gonna go ahead and say set messages is equal to, I'm gonna say current messages, and I'm gonna go ahead and just append to the current messages. This is how you kind of do it in React. You have to do the immutable approach with the setter method. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a message called UID is equal to member ID, and text is equal to message dot text, I believe. All right, so hopefully as messages come in, we're gonna append them to that state array, and we can kind of display them down here. We haven't done that yet, but let's just go ahead and make a panel and inside of that panel, I'm gonna go ahead and try to loop over those messages, like so. And for every message that we get, I wanna go ahead and return a new JSX um, object. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a div here. We can give it a class name of maybe message. And inside of that message for right now, I'm just gonna say message.text. Now, unfortunately, we don't have like a unique identifier for that message, so I'm just gonna use the index of the message for right now to attach a key. In React, when you're doing maps, you need to make sure you add a key with a unique index to your elements so that you can kind of loop over them. All right, so let's actually make sure this works. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new tab now, going to localhost 3000. So now we have two different apps, and I'm gonna type into one and say like, hello. And if I go over to the other one, you'll see that hello pops up in this higher panel. Now there is an issue. The issue is that we're getting duplicate messages, messages sent. And I think the reason is because we're not unmounting uh, and disconnecting when this component unmounts, right? So when we're using Vite, stuff is gonna refresh your page and connect multiple clients using the same UID. So typically when you use an effect, you need to make sure that you kind of unmount and clean up your connections when they're all done. So inside the use effect here, I'm gonna go ahead and return a function. And this is gonna be our cleanup function for this effect. And we need to make sure that we basically disconnect from this channel and log out of the client. So one thing we can do here is we can say client.logout. And very similar to this, we can't use async await. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a function called const logout. And that is gonna be where we call client logout. And I'll just go ahead and invoke it here. Make sure this says async. And we also want to be able to use the channel that we've created up here and kind of do a channel dot leave. Okay, so what we can do is since this is an async method, we can kind of return channel from here and we can kind of keep track of that. So I'm gonna say const connection is equal to connect, calling it like a function. This should be the promise chain which means that we'll have access to the channel here. I know this is kind of confusing, but unfortunately you kind of have to do this stuff when you're doing cleanup with effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, const channel is equal to a weight of connection. And then I'm gonna say await channel dot leave. Okay, so I know this is a lot. This is kind of really confusing, but basically what we need to do is keep track of the same channel we created when we actually connected. And we can do that with a promise or a promise chain. And then we're gonna grab that con channel from connection and then basically log out and leave. So hopefully now when Vite reloads our application, reloads our components, it's gonna successfully disconnect from that channel. So let's just go ahead and type in some stuff here and make sure that those messages get sent over the wire correctly. 
All right, so one thing I'll notice is that when I actually type in my own message and hit enter, it doesn't show up in this panel. So we kind of want to add that functionality as well. So let's just go ahead and find where we actually call send message. And what we should probably do is also append a message to that array. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of abstract the way, actually I'm going to go ahead and grab this code right here, the set messages code. And I'm going to do the same thing here because we don't get a message back from Agora when we are sending our own message. So I'm going to go ahead and append the current message. For UID, we can just use the one that we generated when this application loaded. And for text, again, we can just use the text that we set. So same method, but just different arguments here. So now when we actually type in, if I type in hello, you'll notice that that gets put up here for ourselves. And then that also shows up for the client. Now at this point, we can kind of do some styling. I want to make sure I add the correct classes to some of these divs. So I'm going to do app, and this is panel messages. I'm going to rename all this. I'm going to put this as main instead of that div. Now, one thing that'd be cool is if you could actually put a label that says if it's from you or from them in the chat room. So inside of this DOM element right here, I'm going to go ahead and do some conditional statements to say that if it was me who sent the message, so I can say message.uid is equal to uid, then I'm going to go ahead and print out a div with a class name of user self. And I'll just go ahead and put that, uh, I'll put you with maybe a colon. We also meet, might need to put a space here so you can do this in React. And then if the message wasn't from you, I'm going to go ahead and put a label that says them. So I'm going to say user them, and then I'm going to say them. And then otherwise we can go ahead and put like the text just like this. And again, this is also, we can kind of style this in just a second. In fact, um, looking at here, we might need to switch these. We might want to leave the channel first and then log out. So let's try doing that. But let's go ahead and try to style this. So inside of app CSS, we should have some styling that we can kind of just delete. This is like the default styling that we got from the Vite create app. So I'm actually just going to paste some styling in and I'll kind of explain what a lot of this does because I don't really want this video tutorial to be about styling. I want it to be more about the logic of how do you make in real time chat room. But for the most part, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of doing some layout for the paneling. I'm adding some gradient for the background and then also just adding some different um, widths for the form input and stuff like that. I think I need to wrap this in an inner so that we have uh, some better padding going on. So one thing I'll notice is that there's no space between these. We should probably go back and add a space. How we can do this is just say MBSP with a semicolon and you can just kind of add a HTML character code for a space here. That should add a space. But one thing you'll notice is at the bottom, this input box is kind of outside of the page. I think I just need to refactor that and move it in. So for the entire form, I'm just going to move it up a div like this, save it. And now that div is in the correct place. So I just kind of messed up my DOM elements here. So this is basically the chat room. There's one last thing I kind of need to do, which if you keep typing, you'll notice that you basically get a scroll bar here, but as messages come in from the other client, they don't automatically scroll down to the bottom. So that's kind of a, so it's kind of annoying thing we want to try to fix. So if we go back over here, we can go to the messages and let's just go ahead and add a ref. So in React, you can add a messages ref, which allows you to kind of access the lower level DOM object. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make a new ref called messages ref. And then I'm going to use the use ref hook here. And that allows us to actually access the DOM element when we need to. So now that we have the ref, what we can do is basically try to listen for when a new message is added to this array. So I'm going to go ahead and add another effect here. We can kind of close out of this one. I'm going to say use effect. And I'm going to go ahead and just make that call a function. But this one's going to be a little bit different. This one is going to listen for when the messages array changes like so. And what we want to do is we want to kind of force that reference to scroll down to the bottom of the panel. So I can say messages ref dot current dot scroll top is equal to messages ref dot current dot scroll height. So now whenever messages are appended to this array, what should happen is that we're automatically forced to the bottom of the page, like so. All right, so that basically wraps up this live chat room application using React and Agora.
you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the channel and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this little tutorial. And like always, feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or ask me any questions. I'm always open to try to help you debug whatever issues you might be having. All right, have a good day and happy coding.